Hello folks, Ken Wood here. Today I'm going to show you what goes into a complete short sale package. There are over 15 different items that will probably be included in every short sale package that you submit for approval from the bank. Today most banks have a short sale package and they expect all of their requirements be included in your short sale submissions. There are reasons for each and some have a few twists that can help you put your package on top of the pile of other short sale submissions that the bank loss mitigator looks at every single day. Keep in mind that if your short sale package is not complete to the bank's standards, your package will end up on the bottom of the pile, or worse yet, the not complete pile. And if that happens, good luck closing the sale. Also, keep in mind that we are doing our utmost best to save the homeowner's house from going to auction and having them being kicked out on the street. So here's your short sale checklist. The cover letter. This will include your offer price, why you're making that offer, and a table of contents of the complete short sale package that's included. The table of contents is important because of our, our job is to make the bank rep's job as easy as possible. Also, as the negotiations progress, it gives us the opportunity to refer to that cover letter to highlight certain aspects of our offer. Homeowner authorization. This is a simple form that the bank must have in their possession before you can open up negotiations on behalf of the homeowner. This form is sometimes provided by the bank, otherwise use your standard form. This needs to be faxed into the bank before you submit your complete package. When you speak to someone at the bank about where to fax your authorization, ask them for their short sale package. Ask them to fax it to you, otherwise you could be waiting a long time to receive it. Copy of the lender notification letter. This just makes certain that they can match your offer with their paperwork. Again, anything that you can send with your package to make their job easier is the best way to go. Remember, the bank rep usually gets paid a bonus on closed deals. So if they have a complete package, the time frame necessary to a possible closed deal is shorter than if they have to track down everything they need to negotiate and accept your offer. Listing agreement. It used to be that this was not necessary. A buyer such as myself could work directly with the homeowner and negotiate the short sale directly with the bank. But because of such a huge influx of short sale offers and many not being performed properly, and even more than more that uh, could be considered a little iffy, more and more banks require that the home is listed and on the MLS. The BPO, or the Broker Price Opinion, this is a true evaluation of the market to, to place a value on the home today. Sometimes you may want to use a title company's comparisons as well as your own from the MLS. The reason for this is that they include FISBOs and REOs. With the market still moving downward, you want to make certain that your offer will bear the potential downturn. Also, we try to build equity in the home for the buyer. If you can do that for your client, you will be a hero to them and you will also build your referral base. Rehab and Repair Estimates If there is a need for rehab or repair, fantastic. Don't be afraid of a home that requires tons of work. This only makes your offer more realistic as to the market conditions and the current value of the house. If the house doesn't require rehab or repair, then don't include this in the package. Pictures. Pl take plenty of pictures of the damage to the house, the rundown neighborhood, and the areas of rehab to the house as well. Kitchen, baths, roof, garage, basement, etc. You can show that this home requires a lot of work for it to be livable, then your short sale acceptance opportunity increases. Banks don't want to take back a house and they certainly don't want to take a, a Rio that requires a lot of work to sell it. Keep in mind that we want to show the bank that our short sale offer price is better than they will get if they go to auction. Neighborhood statistics. You know that area, you know the area better than anyone, so include news articles from all the sources that you can. You know the days on the market, the traffic flow, and just how long it could take to sell this home without the short sale price that you have offered. And of course the signed purchase agreement, the bank will not approve a short sale unless they have an offer to work with. They need to know that the home will sell and that you have a buyer before they consider discounting the payoff. Homeowner Hardship Letter The letter should be handwritten and make absolutely certain that it's signed by the homeowner. If their handwriting is hard to read, retype it and include that with their handwritten version, but put it behind theirs in the package and of course make certain they sign that one as well. They must have suffered a true hardship such as death or illness, marital difficulties, reduction of income, employment transfer, an inability to sell or rent the property, a job layoff, house disrepair, neighborhood issues. If the homeowner is contemplating bankruptcy, by all means include that in the hardship letter as well. Supporting documents of the hardship. 
This would include doctor bills, disability paperwork, unemployment compensation history, divorce papers, things like that. Anything that supports their letter needs to be included. Do not scrimp at all on this. Paycheck stubs. The bank re usually requires at least two months of proof of income or lack thereof. Some banks require three, so if that's it, provide it. Uh, do not provide any more than what the bank requires. No sense in giving the bank more than they ask for, for obvious reasons. Bank statements. The, if the bank doesn't specifically request savings account information, then don't include it. They're looking for checking history to make certain that your payment history can be verified. They also make, want to make certain that there are no unusual activities on your account. Income tax returns. Now you don't have to include the entire return. You really only need the first couple of pages. The bank really is just looking to, to um, they're not really looking for your income. The main reason for the return is to verify that the homeowner is, is who they claim to be. So don't overwhelm the litigator with the entire return. Financial analysis worksheet. This is absolutely necessary. The bank needs to see exactly what the income is and where it's coming from, as well as what debts and bills are going out on a monthly basis. The payments need to be recurring, not just a one-time bill for one month. Estimated net sheet, or the HUD-1. This doesn't need to be the final HUD. It can't be because the offer hasn't been accepted. The bank is only concerned in the bottom line, exactly what is the net to the bank based on the offer, commissions, taxes, closing costs, etc. There are ways to make the HUD look a little more favorable to the bank and stay with the out-of-pocket purchase price to the buyer. But there's some, some tricks that you'll learn as you go along. Since we pay cash, since we pay cash and closing costs, our estimated net sheet is very simple and banks love it. Once you've completed the short sale package, make certain that you not only fax it to the loss mitigation rep, but we also overnight a full color copy directly to the rep as well. Again, we want to be sure and we want to be different and on top of the pile. One more little trick, try putting the bank's logo on the top of the cover letter along with the loan doc number. Of course the loan doc number should be on every single page in your package. Our goal as investor buyers is to purchase homes that are in distress for cash and with our purchase you will have a successful short sale and can continue to fill your pipeline with additional listings. As we work together we can both prosper during these exciting times. We can also help homeowners stay in their home because we want to rent the house out. And if the homeowner qualifies and wants to remain in the home, so be it. We want to work with realtors and purchase the homes that they have listed. I want to thank you for your time. I hope that this presentation has given you some additional ammunition. And remember, we are buyers helping realtors help homeowners.